Hello, everybody. Welcome to uh, episode 11 of 25 with Tech 25. Uh, I'm Tim Higgins, Secretary for District 25. I'm Chris Bono, Director of Technology. Happy December to both of you. Happy all December. Right. And all of you out there. Um, and yeah, well, thanks for tuning in. And I'm Andrew. Beth. Oh, yeah. Dan and Andrew, yeah. Specialist. Andrew as well. Um, welcome to uh, episode 11. Uh, and we kind of decided after last week of or not last week, two weeks ago, talking about things that we were thankful of in terms of technology, that we'd kind of keep this sort of theme rolling of um, kind of sharing our own experiences with technology. I mean, we are in the technology department, uh, so we tend to run into different things quite often. Um, and especially, I think I had mentioned it sort of in a little synopsis of this, we're going to just talk about that, those moments that we have all the time. It's like, wait, how did you do that? Stop. Can you explain that to me? Um, and so some of the situations we've run into in the past, um, and we'd like to share some of those uh, little tricks, tips, and uh, fun little nuggets of knowledge that you sort of find just from experiencing things um, using this technology. Right, and as always, if you guys have tips or questions that you can email us or you could tweet at us, um, you can email us at tech25 at sd25.org, or you can tweet at ahsd25tech, and we'll be able to either include those in the show or be able to answer you um, when we're off air. But we're going to go pretty fast today. We've got a lot of things that we want to share with you. So we're going to jump right over to the computer and just start talking about some ways in which we use the programs um, that are either built in or that, that uh, we have access to download and show you some of the ways that they get used. So there you go. thank you very much. All right. So the first um, thing that I want to show or I want to talk a little bit about is one of my favorite programs that I don't think gets enough credit. It's called Preview. So you see a lot of um, things come out about Adobe Acrobat being able to use PDFs, but right built into the computer is a program called Preview. And what I really like about it is what you can do to documents that you either save as PDFs or that you get from other people. So I'm going to show you a couple quick little things. When you first open up uh, PDF and Preview, you're going to see that you've got some standard buttons up here, how to zoom in and zoom out. But what I want to draw your attention to is this drop down is called Markup. And as soon as I click on Markup, and you can see you've got a couple of different options, color options, these are highlighters, or you can underline or strike through. So if I pick a green highlighter, I could say, hey, this is a really important area, this is a really important area, and this is an important area. Maybe somebody needs to update those. I can then save that and send the PDF back to somebody else, and they'll be able to see what I marked up in their document. Okay, so that's markup. That comes right here. But another little trick that um, you can use across all different programs is to control click the menu bar in order to customize it. So I'm holding down the control key on the keyboard. You're going to have to believe me on that. And then when I click anywhere up in this gray area, you're going to see I get a drop down menu. Okay, or a contextual menu. So I can do a couple of things like saying, I don't know what these icons mean, so show me in text, you know, put a little um, indicator down there. Or what I think is important that you do in a lot of programs is go in and customize the toolbar. And you're going to see they give you a whole lot of other options that you can put right up in there. And in preview, the really important one I want to highlight today is this edit button. So I'm going to take it and drag it right next up to markup. I'm going to click Done, and now I have this little Edit button here. When I click on it, you're going to see a little drop-down row here with a whole bunch of tools. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you can draw, draw directly on it. You can add in signatures. Okay, If you do an electronic signature, it has that built into it. Um, you can add text of your own anywhere that you want. So there's a whole bunch of these different tools that comes from the edit button that you can add to your customized menu. So again, anything in PDFs, you can mark it up, highlight, draw attention to it, and again, explore these different tools in here that you have at the ability to go and then further refine things so that you're not having to always write it out, scan it, or hand it back to somebody. So that is the magic of preview. Well, and I think a lot of times, sorry to interrupt, is that uh, a lot of people think PDF is just a snapshot and you can't get to it you can't do anything with it if you pdf it it can't be edited or marked up or anything like that it absolutely can yeah absolutely and, and this is a great way for collaboration um, in a document that has already been created and left in that pdf form 
So this is one we use all the time. And then I just want to again remind you, control click in any menu bar of almost any program will give you that drop down so you can go and customize it. And you'll see it, you get a lot of different options that aren't always evident on default. All right, so I'm gonna quick out of preview. And just to further highlight that, one thing I wanna show you again, if you, if you wanna get more out of your computer too, we control click on a lot of different things. So it's not just in the menu bar, even though again, I can do it up here, but also right on a file. Okay, so right here is just an MP4 video file. If I hold down the control key and I click on it, again, I get this, this pop-up window um, that gives me a whole lot of options. What do I want to open with? Can I move it to the trash? I want to rename it. I want to burn it. I want to tag it. Using that control click, again, in programs and on files, just gives you shortcuts to things that you may want to do or give you other options that you didn't know that you had. The last one in the finder that I'm just going to jump in, and I hope I'm not taking anybody's one, is a quick preview. So for example, I'm going to just change the look here. This is a typical list look for anybody who's using their finder. And all I need to do is if I click on any document and I'm just going to press the space bar. Okay, when I press the space bar, this gives me a quick look. And I can actually look through this document and navigate with the arrow keys up and down without actually opening the program. It works for Pete at almost any file. Here's a video. And only by pressing the space bar does it give me that quick view into the file right away and I don't have to worry about launching more programs. I use this all the time to say, is that the file that I wanted? I can't remember if I named it. The quick look is a huge bonus. All right, I'm gonna show you two other things before turning it over. Um, these are two of my favorite programs. If you like to-do lists, then I would recommend looking into this program called Wonderless. Okay, Wonderless is a free program. You can get an account. And it is a to-do list and organizer. This is a nice background that you could change out. But it's as simple as you can add in um, a quick to-do. But what I really like about it is you can have multiple lists, okay? And you can add any type of a list that you want. So let's say we say this is home. You can share that list with other people. So again, if it's someone in a department or someone at your home that you need to share it with. And then what you can do is view multiple lists together and you'll be able to see all of your to-do items in one section. So there's a management to this that's great. But here's the other part I want to show. When you click on any to-do, it's not just a to-do list like you have built into the program. But it gives you a lot more options in terms of managing it. You could set due dates. You can have it remind you of when it needs to be accomplished. You can add notes or comments to it. And then one of my favorite is you can add a subtask. So if I'm going to buy the book, but I also need to buy a bookmark, And I know that I have that as a subtask, and I can check all of these off as well. So there's a lot more to Wonderlist, but if you're looking for something to manage your tasks better, I would highly suggest looking into that. And then one of the other areas that you probably click on every once in a while and don't know why it's there are these dash lines in the upper right-hand corner. So these are the notifications that are built in. We're not going to necessarily go through all of what it can do. But there are ways to customize these so that you can see what notifications have come through on different programs that you set up. So here, for example, I can say, I see that a long time ago we got a Skype request from somebody. And then I can either address it or I can clear it off. So notifications are a way that you can be aware of what's happening with different programs, again, all in one view. And I know I probably said this was the last thing, but I got to show you one more. I'm going to just drop this in here. If you go to system preferences and you're tired of typing all day, I just want you to know that there's a built-in dictation, this button right here called dictation and speech. When you click on it, you can turn it on. Okay, this feature is on. And I will say here, it allows, or um, when you hit 
when you hit the function key twice, that's the shortcut to start it. I go over here again. This is just a, a note program. I hit function twice, and now I can dictate the words for the note that I want to have, and it will insert it into the program that I want to use. So that's pretty cool. It's a built in dictation program right in, and you can call up that function key anytime you want in, in any program, it will work. So those are a couple quick things that I use um, that are, again, either built in or free that can help either streamline some of the activities you're doing or give you some more options with the programs and files that you are using. So that's kind of what I wanted to share with this first segment. I'm going to turn it over to Andrew, who's going to take you from there. Thanks, Chris. So as, uh, as you heard from the start, it's basically what we do every day. And as we be in preparing for this thing, we were um, just kind of following what we were doing. And I was watching what I was doing with all the spreadsheets I was working on and things that may be helpful to you. And so I do work in data and spreadsheets all the time. And so I wanted to show you a little bit of a, a little bit of Excel tricks. Um, I also want to show a little bit of Mac OS stuff, one of them being you see how Chris just jumped around some documents and you might have even noticed. Um, and I remember before learning this, I'd see people have this thing pop up. This little, uh, these are the applications that happen to be open. It looks like your doc, but these are actually only the items that are open. So what I'm doing is holding command tab, command tab brings this up. And as I hit tab, I'm holding command. I can jump across and I can open Chrome. I can jump across and open Evernote, jump across, go back to the finder, jump across, go to Safari. None of those have windows open. That's why you're not seeing things jump. So you see you can jump between the applications. So I'm holding control, I mean, I'm sorry, command tab, and it's all the applications that happen to be open. Um, if you do this and start using this, you'll be amazed that your hand just starts doing it. You don't even notice anymore. So if I am in Safari and I want to, and this is leading into another thing that I want to show you guys. I'm going to show you how to drop a bookmark into the toolbar. I'm going to go to our district website and you see this little icon right here. It's next to every single URL you'll ever use. If you just drag that right down into this little toolbar, you get the little plus, and it becomes an item. So now if I'm, oh, we already had one there. So if I click on that, it jumps right to that page. If um, some of you might be using Power Teacher all the time, so I'll go to Power Teacher, and I will drag the little icon down next to that homepage one I just did, and now, I can go all the way across here, and even if I run out of room, you'll have a little line, you have a little icon over here that lets you even do more. So so all I'm doing is going to sites, I'm dragging this little, um, I forget what they caught, and just drag it right to the toolbar, okay? Jumping over to Excel, I wanna show you a couple of things that I do every day. Um, this stuff may sound complicated to you when you hear the word concatenate or auto filter or whatever it may be. Don't worry about um, it's not it's not complicated. So this is just a very simple list and I want to show you that if I wanted to do an, a filter this list, I simply highlight that top row, say data and filter and you see these little guys popped up. So now if I want to, filter on this row, you see the items that show up happen to be just those, just the names that it detects in that column. I can unselect these, select, um, I can unselect, <laughs> select all, and then I can just say, I want Chris, I want Eileen, I want John. Get rid of the filter. And you see just those items are there, okay? I can go back in. I clicked right on the little icon there. I say select all, and there they are. I have another spreadsheet that I'm going to do a filter on. It, it'll, it's a better example. I'll show you that filter in a second. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to um, create, I'm going to concatenate some fields. And by that, I mean I'm going to use a simple formula. Don't forget, this, this, this is recorded. You can uh, go back to the YouTube and uh, rewind and see what I'm doing here. 
But if I simply say equals D2, 5, so I just clicked on um, this uh, D2, 5 that I know I want. It's confusing. It happens to be in um, row D2. I hit the ampersand, and I say first name. Those teachers out there know that this is how we set up uh, all of our Google student accounts. I say ampersand again, and in quotes, I'm going to say at student.sd25.org. I put a uh, parenthesis on there, and I didn't need to. Oh, I needed a quote. Jeez. <laughs> so, so you see that uh, I know I know those of you out there. We also use the the home phone number, but I'm going to keep this a little simpler. So all that I did, if you look up here in this icon and this formula bar, is I said D2 um, ampersand, and then the first name. So I just clicked on this, and then I said ampersand, and in quotes it said at student uh, student.sd25.org. I can now, you see, I can actually just when I come to the little corner here, I get a little cross here, and I can actually drag down this spreadsheet. And <laughs> I think I know what happened there. That's awesome. Uh, I'm sorry. I think uh, in all of my clicking around, that's supposed to grab Joe and D25Joe at student.org and D25Jim. I think it's because I was clicking around that Excel got a little confused with me. Sorry about that. Here's another, uh, here's another uh, Excel document where this one might prove a little, it might be a better example of using the, uh, the data filter. So now in filter, I can come and I can choose how many students actually got a calculator. So I can, I don't want the blanks in this column. I just want to select the ones. So these are all the students that got a calculator. So if I, if I, if I want to copy and paste just this group out, I certainly can put it in a separate spreadsheet and they will just be the kids that got a calculator. I can say that I want kids that got a calculator and goggles. So I'm going to say, so you see it's, it's, it's only filtering those that I ask for. So that's something that people may not know in Excel. You got this hefty spreadsheet. You worry about um, being able to get at specific subsets of the data. That auto filter is actually pretty awesome. Um, Another thing I'm going to show is you see that we had numbers in this spreadsheet. The simplest formula in the world is equals sum. And if I select the last and the first, so now I've highlighted the entire co column of calculators and I simply hit return, there is my total for calculators. Okay. Now if I grab that, there's my little crosshair again. And if I scroll across, gotta figure out where that's happening. As if I'm using a different version of Excel or something like that. It's supposed to pick up the, can we edit this whole thing out? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I use Excel every day. When you when you do the this is this Tecra Turtle computer that we're using in this different version of Excel. Here's what it's here's what it'll do on your machine. You grab the first, you drag across, and it will adjust to this column and this column and this column. In both of my examples, that didn't happen. Um, I know, and I promise you that that will happen actually on yours. Um, that's enough Excel for a minute, my gosh. Okay, so working on the doc, I just wanted to show quickly that uh, if we, if there is an application that we use all the time that actually doesn't happen to be down here. Chris was talking about Preview. Preview is an awesome application, and sometimes you actually would like to have it in your doc. Uh, in previous episodes, we've taught you about this um, spotlight up here. So if I just say Preview, 
drag the icon from that top hit, pull it down to my dock. Drag the icon from the finder, pull it down to my dock. You can just drop it right in your dock. You guys may all know that, but I wanted you to know that uh, your district machine came with particular items down there. You can also get rid of items. So you can get rid of something that you don't use. So I might just say, I don't need Skype down here. You just pull it up off the dock and it'll go poof. Okay. Okay, that's my piece. Bring that screen. Okay. So I just have one or two really quick things that I wanted to show as well. Um, and one being, I'm going to open up, um, let's open up Chrome. And I'm going to head to just any any old place um, to describe something. I just, what I'm looking for is text. Um, there's a cool, um, and I'm going to hopefully find a new story that's not super uh sad and upsetting um which is hard to do these days it seems um well at least this is this one looks nice a bunch of cheetahs caught an antelope and didn't eat it so let's <laughs> let's go with that one and so right now what i'm using is um is a trackpad so if all of you have laptops assigned to you which have the trackpad um, and a cool little trick that you can do is if you take three fingers and just lightly tap once over a word, um, you get this little menu that shows up and it gives you a di dictionary definition. Um, in some of the newer operating systems, it, this is actually even expanded where it'll give you a, like a Wikipedia page um, on it. It will give you, if it's a location, it'll give you maps. If it is, um, you know, d depending on what the word is, It'll give you different information. In this case, just because it's you know a word, it'll give us a dictionary definition, thesaurus, um, which is kind of neat. Very so cool. three fingers, easily tap on a word. Um, and so what this is called, this is a gesture. Um, and this is built into the Mac operating system. Um, and you can find it up in the Apple menu in the upper left. We can choose system preferences, show all. And in this case, we're going to look at the trackpad. And so in the trackpad, you may have seen people do kind of neat little quick things that, you know, make different options disappear or appear. Uh, this is the menu in which we would go to either learn how to actually use it. Um, and so we can see that if you scroll over one of these sections, if it doesn't really make sense, you know, zoom in and out makes sense. Um, but over on the right hand side, it'll show you what you actually need to do on the trackpad to make that happen. Um, zooming in and out, also a nice uh, useful thing. And this just happens with pinching your thumb and another one of your fingers together in and out. You can zoom in on photos, on text uh, for anybody who has, you know, trouble with the small font sometimes. Uh, so check out gestures. There's a lot of cool stuff that you can toggle on and off by clicking the tr uh, our little uh, checkbox here. Um, one thing that people tend to find useful if you are a PC user um, is this uh, secondary click where you can actually set it to click in the bottom right corner. It'll make your mouse or your trackpad appear um, in a way where if you click on the lower right hand, you get your little drop down menu happen. Um, and if you don't want to set your trackpad, actually holding the control key on your keyboard and uh, clicking will do the same sort of thing. Um, so one more thing that I would like to share, and that is actually we're going to go back into preview. Um, we saw from uh, Chris talking that preview is very useful for dealing with PDFs, um, but it is actually pretty useful when dealing with images as well. Um, if you ever find yourself in a situation where um, you need to send a picture to someone or, or it needs, you know, maybe it's a profile picture or a picture of your students that you need, you want to put on the class Twitter page or however, um, and the, the picture doesn't seem to fit the size uh, quite the way you want it to. Um, so I just took a screenshot of our little, um, I don't want that one, of our District 25 logo right out of our opening video. And so I just double clicked that, it automatically opened up into preview. Um, and so when it's a screenshot, it's in, I believe, a format called a PNG. I don't know if it's showing us there, but. Um, 
this is another thing. If, if you're trying to upload a photo somewhere and it's requiring a different file format, you can open up anything to preview. You do file, export, and you can export it into all sorts of different file formats. So you can put it into a TIFF, a PDF, um, JPEG. And so it kind of allows you to very easily switch around the formatting of your different photo. Um, also, oftentimes it'll, you know, a different a website will tell you that you've, you know, gone over the maximum file size for a particular photo. You can also come into tools and you can adjust size. Um, and here it gives you the width and height measurement. So we can change this um, to, you know, if it's just nine inches, it will then shrink down your photo um, and change it so that it'll fit into whatever you'd like. Now we have it set to the scale proportionately, which means that it'll keep whatever aspect ratio it's in. So the um, relationship of the width to the height will stay the same. You can also turn that off um, and change the actual shape of your photo as well based on, um, based on your measurements. Okay. Um, and so preview, also nice, you can sort of annotate different things that was shown before. Um, if you have a map, you can, you know, draw arrows as to how you would want to be getting out of a particular area and such. Um, so that is just, that's preview. It can be used for a lot of different things. Um, and so we kind of threw a lot at you. As always, you can pause, rewind, look at this video later. It'll be available on YouTube. Uh, so hopefully you pick up a couple things out of it. And, uh, you know, that's all for today. So I'll get us back on screen here for a second just so that we can say goodbye. We will uh, we'll see you next week and uh, have a nice night.